everyone. I'm Ms. Joanna, Senior Librarian of Children's Services for the Los Angeles Public Library, and I am so excited to welcome you to today's program. Friday afternoons are usually the time that LACL, or Los Angeles Public Library, has authors, and we are so happy to bring you our author for this afternoon. Chris Cooper is going to be talking about his book, A Tale of Witchcraft. I know a lot of you are really, really excited. I see a lot of people who have been waiting for this. So I'm going to keep my announcements really, really, really short. Um, this is the last event in the library's Halloween celebration. We've been having programs to celebrate Halloween, and it's all going to lead up to tomorrow, our big Halloween party, which you can attend and find more information on. If you click on that link right there, I'll also put that in the comments. So we hope you kids can join us. All right, let's go ahead and move on. I'm so glad to introduce you to some of our wonderful librarians who will be handling a panel of questions for our author today. Our first librarian is Miss Lauren from the Studio City Branch Library. You may recognize her from the story times that she helps host in the morning and the afternoon Halloween programs that she's been helping out with this week too. And there's also Mr. Chris. So we have two Chris's today. It's truly a Chris Tober. Um, Mr. Chris is from the Chatworth, Chatsworth Branch Library, and he does a really wonderful draw and tell. Um, story time, and he also recommends so many great books. Pretty much every title that he's recommended to me, I wanted to read. And yeah, they are going to be interviewing our author, which is Chris Colfer, who I'm pretty sure you all know, but I'm going to do an introduction anyway. Chris Colfer is the number one New York Times bestselling author and Golden Globe winning actor. He was honored as a member of the Time 100, Time Magazine's annual list of 100 most influential people in the world. And his books, Struck by Lightning, The Carson Phillips Journal, the many, many titles in the Land of Stories series have just flown off the shelves at the library. So here we are. They're about to come on camera, everyone. We'll magically bring them up. We're going to be talking again with the selling author. Chris Culper about his latest book, A Tale of Witchcraft. And now to practice some witchy magic on my own, let's bring them on camera and onto your screen. Hi, everyone. Hey. Hey. Yeah. All right. Hi, Ms. Lauren. Hi, Mr. Chris. Thanks for having me. Thank you so Hello, much for being Chris. here. Yeah. And thank you to everybody out there for, uh, for joining us today. Fantastic outfit. Fantastic backdrop. You're all ready for Halloween this weekend. Fantastic. Thank you. It's my favorite holiday. I had to had to come correct. Awesome. All right. So we are going to start off with Chris speaking to us. He's going to read a short selection from his latest book, A Tale of Witchcraft. So we will hand it over to you at the moment. Great. Well, since it is almost Halloween, um, I thought it would be really, really fun to read um, a, a ghost story. That's from my new book, A Tale of Witchcraft. Um, it's very spooky. Um, and perfect for this occasion. So here we go. This is called The Daughter of Death. Death, death, death. All right. According to legend, in the beginning of time, death was very different than he is today. They say he dressed like an angel, that he loved to sing and dance, and that he treated life with kindness. They say death allowed every creature to live for 100 years before escorting them to the other side. However, all this changed when humanity was created. Unlike the other species, humans always grieved the people they lost, despite all the years they had together. Death found this behavior extremely curious, and he became desperate to understand it. So, death created a daughter and sent her into the world of the living. The separation made death miss his daughter terribly, and he finally understood what it was like to grieve. He looked forward to reuniting with his daughter once her 100 years of life were over. Unfortunately for death, his daughter liked the world of the living. Over time, she learned how to avoid her father and live forever. On the day of her 100th birthday, 
Beth searched for his daughter everywhere, but he couldn't find her. Panicked, Death invented disease, an injury, to help him look. But his daughter was clever and knew how to avoid his inventions, too. Death was so distraught, he traded his angel wings for the black cloak he's infamous for. Although it's been thousands of years since he's seen his daughter, Death still hasn't given up hope, and he continues to invent new ways of finding her. Today, they say whenever Death takes someone before their 100 years is up, it isn't because he's cruel, he's just searching for his daughter, and he takes people randomly in case she's wearing a disguise. All right, I hope that doesn't give anybody nightmares, but there you go. <laughs> Thank you guys. That was fantastic. Um, I loved I love the tale of witchcraft. I hope everyone at home, if you have not read a tale of witchcraft yet, please check it out because there is, see, I saw in the chat, they were talking about the cliffhanger, but Chris, all of your books end in a cliffhanger that I love that I can't wait to read the next one. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's so a marketing plan. <laughs> it's a good plan. <laughs> so everyone, I could see such love for Chris Colfer in the chat. And this program is for everyone that's watching. So we want to make sure we get to all of your questions. So if you have a question for Chris Colfer, please start putting them in the chat right now. We'll try to get to as many questions as we can. Mr. Chris and I have some questions prepared, but we really want to get to your questions. So our questions right now will just be to get to know Chris Cole for a little bit better, and then I'll, we'll go visit the chat and we'll start asking some questions from the chat. Thank you. So Chris, all week long, we've been celebrating Halloween with lots of other fun events. Can you share your favorite Halloween memory with us? Okay, one of my favorite all-time holiday memories was during the very first season that we were shooting Glee. Mm -hmm. um, we had an amazing makeup artist named Aaron who um, had threw a big Halloween party. And it was one of the first big Halloween parties I'd ever been to. And all the guests were other um, makeup artists who had uh, worked in, in television and film. Some of them had like won Oscars, some had won Emmys for their, for their makeup and like Star Trek and, and monster movies and all that. So they, they came to the party completely decked out in prosthetics and, and lights and, and electricity. And it was, it was just the coolest, it was the coolest Halloween party I've ever been to. And uh, I try to go back every year. I would too. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. It sounds like when you, when you're around those creative Hollywood types, it would be be difficult to top them in any kind of situation like that. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, you don't <laughs> don't even try. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then my question for you is: so the first Land of Stories came out in 2012, I believe it was, when you mm -hmm. were still actively on TV on Glee. Mm -hmm. So that means you must have been working on it, or probably had the idea for it, probably a couple of years prior. Mm -hmm. So was writing something that you had wanted to transition to? Was that something always in the back of your mind? And then also how how did you, being that you were writing them while you were still on Glee, how did you juggle so much between, you know, dancing and acting and writing and publishing and marketing and all that stuff? How do you, how do you, how do you fit everything in? <laughs> it, it was one heck of a juggle. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I, um, I've always wanted to be a writer. Um, ever since I was a little kid, uh, I got bit by the performing arts bug as well as the writing bug at the same exact time. Because uh, when I was a kid, I, I thought acting and writing and singing, and I, I thought it was all just the same thing. I it was just for me, it was all just different forms of storytelling, and and uh, that's what I love to do. I love I love being a storyteller at, uh, at in, in my heart. Um, so I, I I tried writing the, the first Land Stories book when I was about seven years old, um, and it was very difficult to write a novel when I was seven. So uh, my grandmother gave me very good advice to wait till I was a little older and. I knew I knew more words to use, <laughs> um, and and so I did, and and then uh, later I, I got cast in Glee, and um, uh, I uh, a lot of people wanted me to write an autobiography while I was on Glee, and I was nineteen at the time, so I I, I thought maybe I'm a little too young to write an autobiography when I when I'm nineteen, so. I said to the, the I said to the people who who were um, offering uh, book deals. I said I, I I've always wanted to write this this children's fantasy novel. Can can I do that? And um, luckily, I found a great home at um, Little Brown, 
Um, and yeah, the, the first time that I, the, the, the first Land Stories book, I wrote the majority of that book during the Glee World Tour. Um, and so I, I would be uh, underneath the stage of where we're, where our, uh, where our changing, uh, dressing rooms. So I would start the show. I, I would sing, don't stop believing with the rest of the cast. I'd run downstairs. I would, I would start a sentence. I would go back out. I would sing, I want to hold your hand. Then I come back, I'd finish the sentence and then I'd slap on a leotard and go out and do the single ladies dance. And if I was lucky, I might've gotten another sentence or two done, um, uh, by the end of the show. Um, so it was a really crazy, crazy time. Um, and, uh, I can actually, I can actually pick up the first land stories book and I can, I can read a passage from it and I can tell you, uh, what city I was in during the Glee world tour, because I put little clues in, in the, um, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the wording. Wow. You are, you, you have multitasking down to a science head. that might have to be your next career is to teach everybody else how to, how to juggle so many things. <laughs> Caffeine helps. I will say that. Okay. Very good. <laughs> So now I'm looking in the comments, such wonderful, love, lovely comments. Uh, but there are some questions. And one question is from Abby, what is your favorite character friendship to write? Oh my gosh, Abby, that is mm -hmm. such a good question. Good yes. <laughs> um, I can tell Abby reads a lot. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, I love um, in the new series, in the Tale of Magic series, uh, mm -hmm. which includes a Tale of Magic and um, a Tale of Witchcraft, I love writing about the friendship between um, Bristol and Lucy because it's very much based on me and my best friend, Ashley. Um, so there's a lot of us in, 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 uh, in that friendship and uh, it always makes me happy uh, to, to write about them. Chris, may I ask who's, who's which? Are you Lucy Gousset or are you <laughs> Bristol? I, I would like to be Lucy, but I'm probably Bristol. <laughs> but my, my friend Ashley is definitely Lucy uh, on, on, the, on that spectrum between Bristol and Lucy, she's definitely Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, taking another question from the chat here, Mia and Lori are wanting to know about your writing process, which is something I was interested in too. Uh, do they say, they say, do you write, do you type, or do you verbally record yourself and then go back and edit it? Um, and they say that their brain goes so much faster than their typing does. So kind of look yeah. us through how you, how you sit down to write. Oh, same with me. Um, uh, my brain is always working much faster than my mouth and my, my fingers. So that, that, that's difficult for me too. Um, I, I always joke that my writing process is kind of like a cry for help. Um, I, uh, I, my favorite part about writing is the moments right before I start writing or the moments right before I start my, my initial outline. Cause I see the whole book in pictures first, uh, kind of like a movie trailer in my head. And so then I spend the next few days trying to string those images together with words and create a story out of it. Um, so I usually start off by doing a, chapter by chapter outline with, with, with bullet points of what I think the plot is going to be. Um, and I, I usually remain faithful to that first outline for about half of half of the writing process. Um, towards the second half, I end up kind of scratching, erasing things and, and throwing things out and just kind of going, going from there and, uh, and making it up as I go. Um, but um, I, I love to listen to music. I, I love to look at art. I love to, um, I love to watch nature documentaries uh, in between writing because uh, those really th those really fuel my uh, my creative juices. Awesome. And then another question from the chat is from Tiffany. What is your favorite book you have written, and what is your favorite book that you have read? I'm sure you have a lot, but can you oh share with us one gosh. favorite book that you've written and one favorite book you've read? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> that's a tough one. I think my, I don't know. They're, it, it, they're kind of like my children. So it's, it's hard mm -hmm. to like say, Oh, this, this one's my favorite, but, um, mm -hmm. I really loved, um, uh, the fifth land of stories book an author's odyssey, mm -hmm. because it's about a young writer who gets to go into the worlds that he's created and meet the characters that he's mm -hmm. created. Um, and I thought that was really special. Um, and I've experienced that a few times. Um, uh, once when I, uh, uh, I wrote a movie called Struck by Lightning. So showing up to that set every day and literally seeing the, the characters in the world that, that had only existed in my head 
uh, uh, for years prior to that was a very, very, very cool experience. Um, so I wanted to add, I wanted to add that experience into the books. Um, and you know, I really, I love, um, I love a tale of magic and, um, and I, and, and a tale of witchcraft because I, I love the, the response that I'm getting and, and, uh, a, a tale of witchcraft is all about mental health and, uh, Hopefully, it, 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 any kiddos out there that are that are struggling with anxiety or depression, they can read this book and it can help them and and uh, uh, it can give them some tips of how to feel better. And um, so far, I've had a really, really wonderful reaction from that. Um, so uh, I, I'm really proud of that. So that was a long, long answer, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we welcome long answers here. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, another question from the chat from Jack this time. This one's more of a specific question about. Uh, about your story. So I think we're gonna like that as the author and librarians here. So question for Chris, in the same way that Land of Stories has spinoff books, mm -hmm. would you consider turning Daughter of Death into a spinoff from A Tale of Witchcraft? Oh my gosh, Jack, you were the second person to ask me that. Um, I don't know, maybe, that. I think that would be. Um, maybe I. what I should do is uh, do like a, um, uh, like a, kind of like a, I have one of the spinoffs of the Land Story series is the Treasury of Classic Fairy Tales. So maybe I should do like a Treasury of Ghost Stories, um, oh. and uh, that'll be that'll be the main the main attraction. So uh, so we'll see. But yeah, I, I pe people really like that that Daughter of Death. So I'm glad I read it. <laughs> you write your character development is excellent. It's very notable. That's why even a minor character that can appear, I want more of. No, oh, thank you. Books. Definitely. This is a great question. Also, I know there are, there are writers out there. How do you have motivation to continue writing and finish a book? That is a, that's a very good question. And, and um, uh, it, it, it comes and goes, definitely. Um, and I am very, very much um, influenced by uh, the state of the world. Um, and, and sometimes if, if, if the state of the world isn't, isn't so great or or there's some there's some dramatic things happening on the news. I find it it's very difficult to write, um, but I, I think what you have to do is you have to fall into the escapism of your own writing. Um, uh, and uh, I remember my uh, my mom passed away in the middle of when I was writing um, the fifth Land of Stories book, um, and it was it was almost impossible to to finish it because I was I was I was I was devastated. My mom was gone. Um, so I really had to, I had to almost become the reader and I had to um, write a story that was, that was so entertaining that, that even I was forgetting my, my, my troubles. Um, and uh, I think because I had to do that, I think that actually made, made the fifth book one of the best books in the series. So I would say um, to, I, I, to answer that question uh, or to make a long answer longer, uh, I would say, um, uh, yeah, just, just fall into, into the escapism of, of, of your story and, and, and really focus on on what you want people to respond to and, and hopefully that'll suck you into it too. Excellent. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna combine two questions here in chat because I think they can kind of tie in nicely together. So Mio Cat wants to know how do you choose your character names? <laughs> Ari Marone wants to know are there any characters that you struggle to write a personality for? Oh my gosh. Kind of character development there, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I literally the sometimes it's names that that come out of nowhere, like they, they just they just kind of get downloaded into my imagination, and and those are the easy ones. I'm always ha I'm always happy for that. Uh, some characters, um, I literally I just I look out my window and I I just name it off the things that I see, <laughs> um, or like like oh like, you know I, I remember uh, there's a character named Sir Lampton in the land of stories and I could not think of a name to save my life. And so I looked over at my desk and there was my, I have a Batman lamp. And I was like, I was like, lamp, Lampton, done. And so, uh, so that's how he got named. <laughs> uh, and uh, what, was, what was the second part of that question? About if you struggled to write the, you know, the personality or uh, any mm -hmm. of the characters gave you, gave you a challenge to write for. Yes, yes, I, I definitely. But uh, I, I've been lucky because uh, especially the land story series that if, if I don't, if I don't write a backstory or if I don't give a character a personality in one book, I can do it later. Um, mm -hmm. One, one set of characters that I had a really hard time giving personalities to were um, 
the Charming Brothers, which is Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, and Cinderella's husbands, the the charm, the Prince Charmings, yeah. um, uh, because you know they were just good-looking guys who had always been rich and and royal, and I didn't really know what to what to write there. Um, but those they are actually the bad guys in um, a Land of Stories book that's coming out uh, next summer, um, and so I was able to I was able to de develop them for for that one. You just made everyone in the chat and in the audience out there extremely happy. We can't wait. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> I see a question from Lily Colfer. I don't know if there's a relation, but she asks, what's your favorite Halloween movie? I like that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, that is, that's, a, that's the toughest question I'll, I'll ever be asked. Um, I love Hocus Pocus. Um, let me think. Um, I love Nightmare Before uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas, um, and I love The Conjuring, which they're, everyone on this on this is probably too young to watch. <laughs> Possibly so. Yes. Um, all right. Next question I'm going to ask is that uh, so the uh, the library and especially reading, a love of reading, that served as plot points, especially in your previous book, A Tale of Magic. So as a librarian. I feel like I have to ask for all the other librarians watching, do you have any favorite memories of going to a library, if it was a public library growing up, a school library, any of those? Oh, absolutely. My um, my elementary school library at Mickey Cox Elementary, um, I, I was obsessed with with my librarian and I was um, I was uh, her assistant for 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 a few recesses uh, over over uh, over the course. So I would I would uh, I would uh, volunteer recesses and after school to get like um, extra credit points or or whatever. Um, and I would help her like decorate the library and I refile books and, and all that. And uh, uh, when I was in high school, I was, I was um, a, a TA, a teacher's assistant for the librarians too during a, during a period. So I've always loved libraries, uh, very much like Bristol in A Tale of Magic. Yes. Um, and although the, my, my librarians have always been very kind and nice, unlike the one in, in the book. Right. But um, I've, I've always loved libraries and, and bookstores. I just, I feel like there's just, there's just a, just, just like a, a an energy to them that that's just so welcoming and and um, inspiring and um, you know you step into a room full of story what could be better? Absolutely. I love it. I'm look. There's just so so many that have come <laughs> through. It is it is hard to keep up with the chat over here. Yes, yes. <laughs> I love that. That that shows how many fans are out there of your wonderful books. Mm. <laughs> okay, this will be a good one because I kind of wanted to know this too. Will there be a Land of Stories movie in the future? Do you ever think that would happen? I do, yes. So so there, there you know, I will say there's almost been a Land of Stories movie um, a few times um, and um, you know, fortunately, fortunately, uh, in, a, in a different, uh, in a different, uh, in those situations, it didn't didn't quite work out for a number of reasons, which I think is actually a blessing, because um, I've always said I would rather it be a a a great book that a hundred people read instead of a lousy movie that then you know a hundred million people see. Mm -hmm. um, but but yes, I do I do think we were actually um, uh, developing a movie with um, 20th Century Fox for the last like uh, I want to say it was like two two years. Um, and then um, uh, Disney bought 20th Century Fox and the project got kind of lost in that merger and, and then the pandemic hit and then it got even more lost. So uh, right now we are um, actually meeting with, with uh, other people right now and meeting with new studios to see if we can, if we can make it. Um, but um, I, I do think, I do think it'll, it'll happen eventually. Luckily the series has done so well that um, there is, there is a demand for it. Um, I, I just hope everyone's patient with me because I, I, I have one shot to do the movie, really. Um, and uh, I just want to make sure that it is done um, the right way. And it's a movie that everyone can, can be proud of and that they'll be excited to watch over and over and over again. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we will be first in line there to see it when it comes out. Oh, yes. Uh, I've seen seen this question pop up a few times in the chat, so I can't attribute it to one person, but lots of people are asking if you would ever write an autobiography eventually. 19 would have been, might have been too young at that point, but maybe <laughs> at some point in the future you can you can tell us. 
Oh yeah, I think I um I think I would. I um I've got some crazy stories. <laughs> uh so yeah, I, I think I would like to write an autobiography one day. I I, I don't think I'm there yet, um, but um, uh, I used to say maybe when I was 25, since that ship has sailed, I'll, I'll say 40. I'll say maybe by 40. There is a question that I'm trying to keep track of so I don't lose it because it's such a wonderful question that I've been thinking about too. Mm -hmm. Madame Weatherby, Weatherberry's Academy magically creates rooms Based mm -hmm. on people's personalities, what mm -hmm. would your room look like? Great oh my gosh, <laughs> it'd probably be a padded cell. <laughs> um, uh, you know, probably um, it, it would be like it would probably look like Queen Victoria's tea room. If I'm honest, like like I I, I would say like oh a den with like a big screen TV and and but no, it'd probably be like tufted furniture and. And just a bunch of cheesy, cheesy knickknacks. <laughs> right. Excellent. Um, another question from our chat and from Louisa Wood says, which character from your books would you most like to meet in real life? Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> oh wow, that's, that's a tough one. Um, I would, I'd say Mother Goose. I think Mother Goose would be a blast yes. to, to hang out with. Um, and, and I mean, I love nothing more than, than a crassy old lady who has stories to tell. So I would, I would love, I'd love to meet her. I love that answer because Lucy Goose, even though you have to have patience with her, she's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's she, the yeah, comic she's relief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is. <laughs> oh, I love this. Who was your role model for writing? becoming an author. Do you have any role models? Oh my gosh. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, that kind of changes as, as, as I get older. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, when I was a kid, of course it was JK Rowling and it was, um, Ava Abotson and, and Bruce Coville and, um, oh my goodness, CS Lewis. Um, but, um, as, as I get older, I think it's more, um, uh, I, I, I'm not sure the kiddos would, would know who this is, but, um, uh, I'm, I'm currently obsessed with, uh, Fran Lebowitz. Um, and, uh, when I, when I, when I look at her, I see my future. <laughs> Excellent. Um, what would, what would be your special, what would be your specialty if you were either a fairy or a witch? Gosh. Um, <laughs> it's funny. I, I, I've been promoting this book for the last month and I still, I, and I still don't have an answer to that question. Um, <laughs> probably sleeping. That would probably be my, uh, I'm a great sleeper. Uh, well, <laughs> my body doesn't like sleep, but I love to sleep. Um, and, uh, oh gosh. Um, and maybe decorating. Chris, do you ever think that you would write for adults as well in the future? I, yes, I, I would like to. I, um, I have, I have two uh, two adult novels that I would really like to write. Um, two 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 stories. I I, I mean um, that I would love to I'd love to tell. Um, uh, but writing for adults makes me so nervous. Um, uh, I, I I have some friends who are who are um, uh, adult novelists, and they always tell me that no, writing for kids is is way scarier because kids um, are always honest about how they feel about something. Um, where where adults are mostly polite. Um, but, uh, yes, I, I think I would eventually, I think I need to, I need to gain some, um, a little more experience and a little more courage. But I have to say, Chris, the themes in all of your books are way, the way you write them, children can still relate, but they're learning about how the world works mm. and how oh, thank you. it's like for an adult. Because mm -hmm. that scene with in in a tale of magic with Bristol and her mom, and her mom signs it so that she can uh, join mm -hmm. Madame Weatherby Weatherberry's school. Mm -hmm. That really hit me because mm -hmm. as a child, if I read that, I would think, "Oh, adults have feelings mm -hmm. and dreams. We never mm -hmm. that never leaves us. We all have feelings and dreams, yeah. <laughs> even yeah, as adults." Do. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for saying that. I'm so I'm so glad that uh, that resonated with you because because I, I know it resonated with you. It re resonated with um with a lot with a lot of people. So so thank you. 
Awesome. Uh, another question from chat is, is there anything that you uh, that you second guess when you're in the process of writing or that you possibly regret while you're writing? Oh my gosh, I think, I, I think, um, and if there are any other writers who are listening to me right now, I think we can all agree that to, to write is to second guess everything. Um, and it's to never be satisfied with anything at, at all. Um, so I, um, I mean, I, I wish I could rewrite all of my books, but, um, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think perfection exists, unfortunately, in our, in our field. So, um, that, that's one thing you have to kind of get used to as a writer is you're just, you're never going to be satisfied. All you can do is, is tell the story that's in your heart and, uh, and, and, and try to tell the best way you can. But, uh, if, and if you tell the story, then I think you're, you're good. You're golden. Yes, those are perfectly about writing. And if you have a story to tell, write it. Mm -hmm. What is your goal for writing? And what made you want to write books? Mm. Oh my gosh. Um, I think I, I think it was, I really liked when I was a kid, I, I, I had such little control over anything. I, I loved the, the sense of control you had as, as an author. Um, and how you could tell whatever story you wanted, and you were you were in control of of uh, of you know of of whoever you, you you could you could make a mouse fight a, a dragon and make the mouse win. I I, I love that. I, I love being able to create like Cinderella type stories, um, and uh, and just the escapism. I, I'd say just 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 immersing yourself into into a story uh, completely. Um, there, there are times when I'm writing, right? Sometimes I forget what's real and what's 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 fake, and I love that. I love that that feeling. Absolutely. All right. Another question from the chat is, uh, yeah. So it, uh, the question is, how do you feel about adults and young adults reading your books that are mostly for children? I know in our library system, mm -hmm. like Land of Stories and Tales of Witchcraft, get put in the kids section. But as a guy in his 40s that just read Tales of Witchcraft and Tale of Magic, I absolutely love those books. I have no shame. Mm -hmm. do, you, oh, do, you. Do, do you feel like you have an mm -hmm. audience in mind? Or are they just for everybody? Do you, do you see yourself kind of crossing over those those different age gaps? Oh, gosh. Um, uh, I kind of going back to what a little bit what I said I, I I think I just try to tell the best story I possibly can um, and uh, I like telling stories about young people um, uh, and um, I love um, I love planting seeds of, of intelligence and compassion in a young audience because I, I really feel like that is that is how we are going to change the world mm -hmm. um, so um, I love, I, I, I guess I, just, I love writing for young people. Um, I, I guess I, I get a little embarrassed sometimes when I hear about adults reading my books because um, I, um, I don't know, I, 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 I you know, the, the good thing about being a, an author for, for, um, uh, for a young audience is you don't necessarily have to be the best writer. As long as you tell an entertaining story, kids are gonna love it. So I, I kind of love getting away with that. Um, uh, but uh, whenever I hear about adults reading my books, I, it, 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 it almost adds um, it adds pressure to it. <laughs> no, 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 there's no pressure here because we love you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. <laughs> okay, I lost the question, but I I, I apologize. I'm going to try to remember it because it's just such a great question. What advice do you have to instill? values and confidence in children and in your readers? Hmm. I would say read as much as you can um, because uh, sometimes nothing, uh, sometimes, sometimes nothing helps us learn morals and lessons and values like reading about someone else who does. Um, and um, it's, to any parents uh, listening right now, I'd say to just start reading to your kids as soon as possible and start reading them fairy tales. Start reading them the, the classic fairy tales by, by um, Brothers, Brothers Grimm and Hans Christian Andersen and Charles Perrault because those, those stories are filled with, with, with very valuable um, uh, very valuable lessons and, and great pieces of advice about life and about growing up. And if you if you install those in a child early enough, um, it you know it they you know it, it, if a kid if a little kid hears the story of Little Red Riding Hood um, when they're very very young, they will know the rest of their life to not trust strangers and to always 
you know, be safe and, 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 you know, look both ways where they cross, cross the road. So, um, yeah, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say, read, I'd say, read, 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 read. We support that message as a librarian. Yes, we, we, love, we love that answer, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know I love, my audience. <laughs> <laughs> Lost track of the question, but you were you were talking uh, a little bit ago about uh, translated land of stories to movies as well. So somebody was asking if you secretly fan cast characters in your head while you're in the process of writing them. Oh yes, oh yeah. <laughs> so um, the problem with it is um, I've been fan casting forever. Um, the problem is, uh, the, especially Alex and Connor, uh, kids grow so quickly that, um, but I, honestly, every single person that I've wanted to cast in the Land Stories movie has, has gone on to be a huge star. Um, so I think that's, 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 that's a, a good sign for me as, as, as a, maybe as a casting, uh, director, but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think, um, I remember I wanted Jennifer Lawrence to play Goldilocks. Um, and I remember I wanted, um, Oh gosh, I wanted. Um, oh gosh, um, uh, oh, what's her name? Um, the 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 actress who plays uh, Victoria in Victoria. Um, uh, Je uh, Cole, I uh, I'm, I'm blanking on on her name. Um, uh, I wanted her to be Little Red Riding Hood. Um, but now, of course, they're 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 all of us are in our thirties now, and and we you know we're we're a little too old to play those those parts. Um, but um, I, I feel like when that happens, I do feel like it'll there'll, there'll be well at least fingers crossed. I hope there'll be a little magic to that. I, I hope um, I hope we really find the right people. Um, and um, I think um, uh, yeah, I'm just really excited for for it all to happen. I, I think I think it's going to happen sooner than later. Awesome. So everyone, we're nearing the end of this great program. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll have time for two more questions. So please make them good. So I'm going to look for a good one right now. <laughs> no pressure, guys. Yeah. I love this one. Oh, I, I lost it. It was about Bristol because we haven't talked too much about. Okay, here we go. If you had the chance like Bristol mm -hmm. to cast a spell, what would you do with that spell? Ooh, I would, um, I think I would try to, um, and, and this is a very, this would be, very, this would be power that Bristol was to possess, but um, I would try to get rid of prejudice. I'm on board with it. Yes. <laughs> simple, simple answer. Yeah, I probably could try to get rid of prejudice and um, and um, and 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 just try to overall uh, create a a, a fairer and um, more compassionate world. I love that answer. I love it. Yes. Um, I feel like um, I'm on Miss America. <laughs> <laughs> Practice your way. <laughs> Um, elbow, 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 wrist, wrist, touch, shoulder, blow, kiss. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we know uh, Land of Stories and, and Tale of Witchcraft, Tale of Magic are all set in fantasy world, but are there some parts of your books that are based on your real life experiences? Yes. Um, uh, so in, um, uh, in, the, in the third Land Stories book, A Grim Warning, and the sixth Land Stories book, Worlds Collide, um, Everywhere that Connor and Bree and Emmerich go in Europe, I've been to. Um, and, and everywhere they go in New York, I've, I've also been to. Um, and that, uh, taking, taking writing, taking author trips uh, around the world to uh, make notes of what things look like and, and what those experiences are like um, so I can write about them later is uh, my favorite part about writing. Um, but uh, their adventure in Neuschwanstein Castle, I, I did in Germany. Mm -hmm. the, Going into the into the graveyard of where the brothers Grimm are buried, I did that. I didn't break in in the, in the middle of the night like like Connor and Bruce, but um, uh, I definitely I've been to the, those graves. Um, and uh, uh, and it's going. I actually got to go on the roof of uh, the Empire State Building, which was really really fun. Not like the not the observation deck, but like at the very very top, like where they where they shoot King Kong. Um, that was really cool, and um, uh, wouldn't have been able to do that unless I was. Um, if I was uh, an author making notes about a, a new book. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, I just 
I love it. I hope everybody had a wonderful time. I sure did. <laughs> it was so nice to get to know you, Chris. We love your books, but it was also great just to get to know you a little bit as a person. Thank you so much oh, for your time. I hope you away. <laughs> and your talent, that is for sure. Your books never stay on our library shelves, ever. Oh, good. But I'm glad to hear that. I have copies oh. right here. <laughs> the, the Land of Story series. A tale of magic. And Mr. Chris has a tale of witchcraft. If you want to enjoy these books from home, you can. With the library's library to go program, that's where you can go on the library's website, put those books on hold, and make a contact-free pickup appointment at your nearest library to go hub. I mean, come on. Chris Colfer's A Land of Stories. I know some of you are rereading it five times. So reread it a sixth time. Place it on hold. And we do have the Tale of Witchcraft now available at the libraries that you could place a hold and pick up. Thank you. Mr. Chris, would you like to add anything before we say goodbye? No, this has just been an absolute delight to talk with you here, Chris. And the, the questions are still coming in, so you have not scared anybody off. You still got no, all your- good. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys so, so much for, for having me. So and, and thank you guys for doing all that you guys do. Uh, I, libraries always make the world such a better place. So, so thank you. Thank oh, you so thank much. Thank you, Chris Colfer. Wasn't, uh, this is unforgettable time with the library and with Chris Colfer. So thank you everybody. Happy mm -hmm. Halloween. Enjoy your Halloween spooky weekend. Bye everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye Chris. Bye guys. Bye Mr. Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>